Is there an Ethereum killer? Or has Ethereum already won the race to become the leading public blockchain and smart contract platform? Has it already built a moat that's too hard for any other project to cross? Could it become an internet money and could we actually see a flippening happen? So that's what we talk about in this video. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from Dapp University. On this channel, I teach you how to build blockchain technology, but you don't have to be a developer in order to watch this video. If you're interested in blockchain, this video is for you. So everyone talks about, you know, Ethereum killer this, Ethereum killer that. They're always talking about new projects that are popping up that could do something better than Ethereum. All right. But I want to talk about how unrealistic this is for a lot of new projects. Okay. Ethereum has a seven year gap that someone would have to cross in order to beat it. If someone was going to take over Ethereum or even just compete with it in all, uh, they would have to cross this huge gap. So let's look at what Ethereum has done in seven years and what a similar type of thing, you know, another blockchain would have to do in order to compete with them. So in 2014, Ethereum had their ICO. So they got a lot of capital to get started. Uh, 2015 was the launch. 2016 was a big opportunity for mining Ethereum. Uh, 2017 was the big ICO boom with ERC-20 tokens. 2018, sort of the year of the DAP. 2019 has been the year of decentralized finance, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. And also 2020, I think, is going to be the big year of Ethereum 2.0 rolling out, where we see Ethereum really get ready for prime time. So that's the momentum that Ethereum has gained over the past six years, going on into seven years for 2020, okay? So let's talk about the problems that another blockchain is going to face if they try to take over Ethereum. Okay. So problem number one is it's really hard to create a public blockchain that people will actually use and that actually works. Okay. So this is evidenced by all these projects coming out that say they're going to be Ethereum killers, but have either empty blocks, you know, no users, or they haven't even launched yet. Now I'm not trashing these projects necessarily. All I'm saying is this is a hard problem to actually solve. And this is evidence as to why a lot of people are trying and they're not actually succeeding. All right. It's really hard to get people to run the infrastructure that's going to give the blockchain security. All right. For example, you know, Ethereum right now has miners. So how do you convince people to actually be miners? Well, you have to have a cryptocurrency that's actually valuable. All right. So unless you had an ICO that has, you know, raised funds already trading on an exchange at a good valuation, uh, if you don't have that, then it's hard to get people to want to run your network either as miners or as stakers, because either way they have to get cryptocurrency rewards in order to want to run the network. All right. So if another project's going to try to take over Ethereum, they have another problem, which is it's really hard to get users and gain mind share as a blockchain. But Ethereum has already done a lot to address this, okay? So for one, you know, it's the number two market cap cryptocurrency right now at the time of recording this video. And, you know, people see Ethereum all over the place if they've been exposed to cryptocurrency. If you ever downloaded a wallet, if you ever been on coinmarketcap.com, you know, just behind Bitcoin, you're always seeing the Ethereum logo everywhere. Uh, you're, you just kind of gained mindshare already in the crypto community. And this mindshare funnels down into actual usage. So if people are going to use the platform right now, they need to hold Ether, okay? So if they've ever participated in an ICO, like in the 2017 boom or after, right, they've probably touched Ether. If they've just been on a, any cryptocurrency exchange, they've seen it, you know, as an option and probably held it or transferred it in some way. So that gets people using Ether as, you know, a store of value and a digital currency, right? But what about uh, the actual apps? Well, that's another problem that, you know, another blockchain is going to have to cross in order to get users is actually create apps that are useful to other people. So I talked about, you know, 2019 sort of being uh, the year of the DAP, as I like to call it. And when people are first trying to find out, like, what are the actual use cases for DAPs? What can you do with them? One big criticism was that, you know, all these DAPs require transaction fees. All right. So I'll give you a hint. If a DAP requires a transaction fee, that means the DAPs that are built on top of Ethereum are primarily going to surround financial use cases. So they're already going to spend money. It's not really that much of an overhead to have a really small transaction fee occur. So that takes us to 2019, the year of DeFi, all right? And that's where we see a lot of uh, dApps pop up that are really useful on Ethereum. So DeFi is basically just taking, you know, existing financial products and porting them over to the blockchain. I just did a whole video on this if you want to go check that out. But just a high-level overview, uh, you know, Ethereum has got a lot of really good DeFi dApps that are powered by smart contracts that are running the blockchain that allow people to do stuff like, you know, or earn interest, uh, borrow money, do derivatives, and things like that, right? You can see a whole list of of uh, projects here on DeFiPulse.com. You see the total value of US dollar locked into DeFi projects right now is $544 million. So if someone's going to compete with Ethereum, they have to build you know, a useful uh, application layer ecosystem like this where people can actually go do things on the blockchain they can't do somewhere else. So that's one big reason I think DeFi is a big... Um, 
you know, catalyst for blockchain adoption is that it's giving you ways to do things in the blockchain that would be hard to do somewhere else. Like it, cryptocurrency initially gave people the ability to speculate on price in a way they couldn't before, store value, transmit money in a way they couldn't before. Well, now you could go park money in a DeFi protocol like this um, and, you know, earn a higher percent interest rate than you could somewhere else. Now, again, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to do this necessarily, uh, but I just want to tell you that this is an option that people are doing it. And this is what's helping uh, Ethereum really take off and securing that gap that's harder for other people to achieve. So yeah, another gap that an Ethereum killer is going to have to cross is that it's really hard to build a developer ecosystem, all right? And developers are essential for a project's success. So have you ever heard the uh, developers, developers, developers chant from Steve Ballmer? I think this is the 25th anniversary uh, like Microsoft keynote. This has become a meme that's you know, circled around the internet, but it's true, right? We need developers and we need this enthusiasm behind these projects in order for them to succeed. So here's why this matters, all right? I don't know if you've ever tried a programming language or framework before that doesn't have very many developers using it. It's way harder to use than something that does actually have other developers. If you've ever done this before, it's really frustrating, all right? Here's why. Well, the tools are brittle, okay? Stuff breaks all the time. And if you try to Google a problem, you can't always find a good answer. And if people aren't building tools and libraries for you to use as a developer, then you have to build everything yourself from scratch, which takes way longer. And it just leads to burnout and you just developer happiness tanks. So all these problems get way better when you have a thriving developer ecosystem like Ethereum does. And this is another gap that another project is going to have to cross in order to beat them. So Ethereum has four times more developers than any other crypto ecosystem, okay? So despite the downturn in the markets uh, in 2018, full-time developers increased by 13%. So that's already a huge gap that Ethereum has secured against big projects that already have momentum, okay? And we just uh, heard from DevCon, uh, one of the biggest blockchain developer conferences in the world. Uh, we heard Joseph Lubin give the challenge uh, for 1 million Ethereum developers by the next DevCon, which is in 2020. I also created a video on that. If you want to check that out. Okay. So they created a tool to help onboard new people into the ecosystem and developers where they can basically uh, experience the blockchain, get that aha moment, and try to bring a lot more people into the space to get this snowball rolling. When they see the magic of Ethereum, uh, it sort of automatically you know, sort of locks them in and gets them on board. So this site shows that Ethereum already has 200,000 active developers right now. So another project has to secure a huge amount of people to build on top of their platform, okay? And it's gonna take a lot of work to cross 200,000 developers. So let's look at some other metrics. You know, the uh, developer tools are still growing like crazy, right? So Truffle is a framework that's used for building Ethereum smart contracts, and we're still seeing steady growth and adoption of monthly downloads for this tool. All right, so those are some of the problems that another project would have to uh, tackle in order to cross this seven-year head start that Ethereum already has at becoming a leading public blockchain and smart contract platform, okay? So, you know, lastly, uh, if Ethereum has secured this huge gap as a leading protocol, does it have a shot at being, you know, the internet money? And could we see the flipping happen where it becomes actually the number one market cap cryptocurrency, all right? So let's kind of look at that. Well, if the entire cryptocurrency market continues to grow, then there's no uh, doubt that Ethereum is going to go right along with that trend. But if the Ethereum network becomes more and more valuable, then Ether itself is going to become more valuable, okay? If more people come in and have to use the platform, more people are going to need to buy and hold Ether. And especially if uh, proof of stake uh, comes along in Ethereum 2.0 and makes it easier for you to help maintain the network and earn rewards for doing that, then that barrier of entry is going to become lower uh, from a hardware perspective and cost perspective. And that'll also make it more valuable for you to hold Ether and stake it on the network. So that continues to happen over time. More and more projects move to the Ethereum network uh, to back their own assets, like stable coins and other projects that actually use Ethereum as a reserve currency. Then yeah, Ethereum can become more valuable. And if more poor people rely on the network from that side of things, we could see Ethereum become more valuable than something like Bitcoin in the long term and become the actual leader. All right. So again, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy Ethereum based on this. I'm just telling you what could happen. And also, could we see uh, Ethereum become the internet money, all right? So one big criticism to this is people always talk about Ethereum being a volatile asset, right? The price is always changing, going up and down. If people don't see it as useful uh, for 
for money in that case, okay? And I agree, I think that makes total sense. But if you think about Ethereum as a money that's gonna back something like a stable coin, then yeah, we could see Ethereum as uh, a money that's backing something like DAI, for example. If you think about like the US dollar being backed by gold, uh, we could have an internet dollar built on top of Ethereum where ETH is the primary asset that's used to back that up, support it, and make this other smart contract layer or stable coin useful as the digital currency that people transact with natively on the Ethereum blockchain. All right, so that's an overview of the commanding lead that Ethereum has in the blockchain space right now. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Can anyone actually beat it? Can they overtake it? Is there actually an Ethereum killer out there right now? All right, so if y'all like this video, again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, click the like button down below. And if you wanna to learn to become a blockchain developer, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.